It's darkness, and then bang. Giving birth to an endless expanding existence of time, space, and matter. Every day, new discoveries are unlocking the mysterious, the mind-blowing, the deadly secrets of a place we call the universe. They appear out of nowhere and threaten our very existence. From rocks crashing through homes to Mount Everest-sized boulders triggering mass annihilation, no one is safe from their wrath. And some of these intruders are not extraterrestrial. They're actually man-made cosmic junk. Take cover as we investigate meteorites and space debris, the deadly stuff that falls from space. p.m. October 6, 2008. The Catalina Sky Observatory in Arizona notices something it hadn't seen before. An asteroid the size of an SUV is screaming down towards Earth at over 27,000 miles per hour. An alarm sounds throughout the international scientific community. Is this asteroid on a collision course with Earth? This object was special because it was probably going to impact the Earth. And over the course of the next 21 hours, 500 observations were made of the object to try to exactly calculate its orbit. At NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, Steve Chesley gets the urgent wake-up call. Everyone wants to know when and where this rock will touch ground. They sent me the data. I rushed into the office rather excitedly and uh, spent the next couple of hours trying to get my arms around the problem by running the numbers. And I reached the conclusion it was a 100% chance of impact. Chesley calculates the collision will occur in less than 13 hours, approximately 5.45 a.m. Eastern African time. Its target, the Nubian Desert in northern Sudan. We hadn't really expected or anticipated the discovery of an asteroid that was going to hit the Earth uh, before impact. Um, with time to react and time to predict the location of the impact is uh, very extraordinary. Never, never seen it before. It was countdown to impact. With no time to stop this runaway space rock, emails went out to alert those on the ground and in the air. 5.45 a.m. The moment has arrived. A commercial pilot is flying over Sudan. He witnesses a fireball smack right into the Earth's atmosphere with the energy of about a thousand tons of TNT. As it entered the atmosphere, it started to burn and brighten. At some point, it stresses on the body became so fantastic from the atmospheric pressure that it just exploded. That explosion would have sounded like a sonic boom. On the ground, 23 miles below, Sudanese people returning from morning prayers hear the frightening sonic roar. Witnesses see a brilliant fireball, followed by mysterious flashes of light streak across the sky. Scientists had hoped the asteroid wasn't heavy enough to completely penetrate through the Earth's atmosphere and wreak havoc on the ground. Satellites track the fiery explosion, but there is little indication that any fragments survive. So there is a possibility that people could be frightened by such an event, but uh, the risk of injury is really very low from something so small. And Steve was correct. There were no reports of injuries or damage due to falling debris in the remote region. Planet Earth was spared from a potential disaster, partly because the region was so remote, the impactor was small. But the story doesn't end here. December 2008. Astronomer Peter Yeniskis organizes a search and recovery team from the University of Khartoum in Sudan. He's determined to find the unlikely. Meteorites, 
the surviving fragments of the asteroid named 2008 TC3. We had a busload that students were all eager to go and search. We dropped 29 kilometers into the desert to go through the area close to the explosion to look for the smaller pieces that might have survived. The meteorite hunter's only guide is a map of the Nubian desert with the projected approach path of the asteroid. They basically used my trajectory and the ground track that I had laid out on the desert floor as a guide for their search. Lined up everybody about 20, 30 uh, yards apart and then started walking down the desert in line, searching for things that were black. But spotting small charcoal-like stones on the rocky desert surface is akin to finding a needle in a haystack. As the sun begins to set on the first day, the team is about to walk away empty-handed when a student suddenly comes forward with a suspicious rock. A student called Mohammed Alamin had this little rock in his hand that was clearly a meteorite. It had a beautiful black fusion crust around it and it was undoubtedly a meteorite. And then everybody started being excited and shouting and singing and uh, waving their hands. 280 meteorite samples were eventually recovered, equaling 11 pounds, which for planetary scientists was like hitting pay dirt. This was one of the meteorites that was recovered. Uh, not much bigger than this. We think that a lot of these meteorites, when they came out of the explosion, were tumbling very rapidly, and that resulted in the breaking of the meteorites when it was still up in the air. 2008 TC3 is the first asteroid ever observed in space, which was later found on the ground. Scientists are calling it the first asteroid sample return mission. It's the first time that we've actually detected something in space, figured out that it was gonna hit the Earth, figured out where it was gonna hit the Earth, and we actually saw it hit the Earth. We've even recovered pieces of it. That's remarkable. This whole experience was really fantastic for us. This was an excellent test for what we're really preparing for, which is the possibility of having to deal with a larger impactor sometime in the future.